G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. First up, thanks very much to everyone that's liked and subscribed and especially the comments. There's something I really enjoy about this channel is the comments. Uh, I definitely received a lot of funny ones lately. Uh, but yeah, definitely guys, thanks very much for all your support. Um, so I broke a whole lot of paracord. And look, you know what? I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, probably a question all of you are asking is like, why did I actually bother breaking paracord? Because there are other uh, videos out there, people doing it. Um, there's a, a pretty good reason. I actually wanted to test this style of um, knot that I've been doing for quite a while. Uh, and it's a little bit different to what I've actually seen uh, online. I did a bit of research to see who else is doing this. I actually really wanted to see someone else who'd uh, done the brake tests because um, I wanted to find out how strong it actually is instead of just saying, it's like, hey, you know what? It's a pretty strong knot. Uh, I definitely wanted some proof on it. Uh, but that was my primary driver behind doing this. Uh, I decided to turn it into a video because I'm sure other people want to see paracord getting broken um, and particularly uh, learn a little bit about, or uh, well, particularly three main knots, or three really common knots that people use um, and which one's stronger and why knots break and um, you know why the line will actually fail. Um, and so I sort of you know, delved into that and I came up with a few interesting answers. Uh, but particularly this one here. Um, this is a little bit different because it is whenever you see anyone do um, like a buried eye splice on paracord um, uh, or the stitch through, yeah, I, most people remove all the inner strands, um, which essentially means that this is only as strong as the outer sheath of paracord. I figured out a way uh, quite a while ago of doing this without actually weakening the paracord at all um, or removing any of the strands at all uh, and stitching straight through it. And you're going to need a special fit for it. Um, and I, you know, there'll be more on this towards the end of the video for people interested. But I started out, you know, just making them out of brass, uh, brass paracord, um, sorry, brass tubing. Uh, it's fairly simple to make. It's actually not difficult. I like these so much uh, that I, you know, went up to. I started making them out of stainless steel. There's a lot of advantage of actually making a proper. Uh, paracord needle feed. These will get you out of a bind, um, but they're not maintenance free. They go blunt really quickly uh, and they collapse around the tube. And there's a few other issues with them. But um, as far as like a DIY um, uh, thing to make, the paracord, the brass tube uh, needle feeds are actually reasonably easy to make, I would say. Uh, these you need a lathe, um, but there'll definitely be more on that towards the end of the video. Uh, I've broken this up in a few sections. The first one's going to be construction. I'm going to keep that short because this is a you know, video about or a channel about machetes and being out in the bush. So it's definitely not about being in my workshop. So the first part is going to be construction. Okay, I thought I was really clever. Um, I thought about doing this video and I thought, you know what, I'll spend 35 bucks. I'll get myself a crane scale on eBay. And soon after that, I've worked out that, you know what, you can't shock load sensitive measuring equipment. So I had to go back to the drawing board. Um, and you know what, I remember the video I saw, video I saw a while ago uh, by Mathis Wandell and he uses a bathroom scale and he's a bit of a woodworking guru, really knows his stuff. So I took you know, what I learned from his videos and modified it slightly, and I came up with this rig here. And basically what I've done is I've come to a three to one uh, advantage, a three to one ratio in advantage to the bathroom scale. And I decided you know, what I have to use this for is this digital scale, I use this to calibrate my bathroom scale rig. So 200 kilograms here, reads 66.7 kilos on the bathroom scale. Now, not to bore you guys with all the details, I'll, I would have glossed over a construction of it by now, I'm sure. Uh, but that's basically my rig. It's not super scientific. It's very accurate. Um, I you know, started out with a beam scale, which I'd used, uh, which I'd actually machined up on a mill to be as accurate as I possibly can get it. Uh, that was from a build that I did years ago. Uh, I just modified that so I could use it on the engine crane uh, to uh, yeah, set up this rig for you guys. Now, the next step, this is gonna be the bit that's gonna be the most interest to everyone is the three control knots which I tested because I needed one knot where the uh, that was basically stronger um, than the line strength of the paracord and that's what I worked out so this next section is on me finding out the control knot all right control knots uh, I tested three uh, one of them is a really common one that most people know about most tradies know about it anyway because if you tie a rope on a trailer uh, if you tie a rope on the back of a ute um, a lot of other people know it as well but it's the clove hitch it's one of the simplest ones it's one of the first ones you learn as a tradie that's what I remember anyway um, I tested that one I tested the figure eight follow through now this is a bit of a holy grail knot for uh, abseilers riggers rock climbers 
Um, I, I actually designed this whole rig to take that because I just took it on face value that it was you know, one of the better knots. Uh, but the third one I came up with, this is more of a fisherman's knot. And so it was actually quite new to me. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people actually already know about it, but it was called the uh, improved clinch knot. Uh, that is, was by far the winner. Um, it was the only one where I could actually get the, uh, the line to fail before the knot failed. Now, if you know anything about knots, you know anything about tying knots and lines, um, if, if something's going to fail, it's going to fail at the knot. Okay, obviously that doesn't include a weakened line or you know a weak spot in the line somewhere or a line that has uh, been abraded on a certain spot. Uh, but one thing I found consistently through all these tests was the knot would fail uh, at the first bend the first harshest bend on the loaded side. Now, if you have a look at this figure eight follow through, you can see I marked the first hard bend or the, first, the harshest first bend on the loaded side. Uh, that is where it consistently failed on the figure eight follow through. Uh, the clove hitch had the same effect because as you load up that line, the whole knot, as it tightens up, the whole knot rotates around, putting a bend on that main line and it broke it, that spot there. And it's also the same thing with that, uh, that um, knot, that eye splice knot that I do. Uh, it consistently failed at the um, lowest, the last pass through. It's basically just basically either where I burn or back the line or I whip and stitch. It fails at that spot there. Now, this is where I found the, uh, the improved clinch knot had its most advantage, basically because the loaded side remains relatively straight um, throughout the whole uh, knot tying process. And even when it's loaded up, that loaded side, uh, it, it, it doesn't actually get distorted by the knot. And the way it actually works is the loaded side stays straight, it gets passed over um, you know, the branch or the the steel rod, um, and I just did it twice just to double up to create a little bit of extra friction, but all the actual tying force comes from the unloaded side, and instead of actually tying and bending the main line or the loaded line, it clinches, it grabs. So the tighter you pull this knot, the harder it will actually clinch over the line. I'll definitely do a close-up of um, these knots and where I got that information from. Um, but basically, from I did three breaks on all of them as well, and I just averaged it out. Um, the worst performer was the figure eight follow through. Now that could be operator error. Uh, I could have tied it wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm pretty handy with tying knots. So um, it could be operator error. It had one major advantage over everything I tested though. And it's the reason why probably abseilers and rock climbers uh, use the figure eight follow through. It does not slip. It doesn't slip an inch. Once you've tied it, that's it. It's set. Um, but it's, uh, I found it failed at, you lose about 33% line strength, um, which I found with the paracord and the way that I tied it. Again, that could be operator area error. It's uh, listed at about, um, you know, you're losing about 25% of line strength with the figure eight follow through. Uh, the better performing knot was actually the clove hitch, uh, and it broke at 186 kilograms, which worked out to be about 30% loss in line strength. Um, I had to try a few half hitches um, past that as well so it wouldn't slip because it slipped. Uh, and the improved clinch knot, which actually slipped the most, but it was part of the resetting of the knot. And because it's so stretchy, the paracord, the paracord's very stretchy, um, it had to slip quite a few times uh, through the tightening process or the stretching process. Um, but it by far, I got the paracord to break at the actual line to break at 270 kilos at one of these um, at one of my tests which is about i think 590 pounds uh, i didn't do my conversion properly on that one but it's about 590 pounds um, the average i found for the improved clinch knot was look it's anywhere between 260 and 270 so i just did 265. Um, so my whole test i did with everything uh, was based on the improved clinch knot. So every test that I do uh, from next past this video here, at the bottom of it is an improved clinch knot, except for one which I made a mistake with. All right, now back onto the whole point of why I did this video was to test these eye splice or this, this eye splice style knot. Um, I broke it up into uh, two or three sections. The first one, I call it, <coughs> whenever I say single, double, triple, or quad, all that means is how many times I've passed it through the main line. Uh, so that's the, um, so the first one, it was a single, and it's stitched and whipped. Uh, and all I mean with that is that basically that little tail that comes back out once I've stitched it through, once I've um, passed it through the main line, is I stitch it really with really strong cord backwards and forwards, and then I whip over that. And it's about, 
look, it's uh, less than half an inch. It's probably about a quarter of an inch. It's about uh, six or seven millimeters. And it was a very, very tight whip. And it's something I've been doing for years and I can do it really well and really tight. Uh, but that is a stitch and a whip. So uh, single, double, and a triple. Uh, basically, the single broke at 126 kilos with a loss of about 52% line strength, which is quite a lot. Uh, the double um, was 174 kilos, which is a loss of about 34%. And here comes one of the first main mistakes which I made is the triple stitched and whipped. Um, I tied a clove hitch at the bottom instead of a uh, improved clinch knot and it broke at the clove hitch, uh, which is a loss of about 32%. Um, so look, that was a stitched and whipped. The, the next section um, was actually proved to be, I would say, probably the stronger way of actually rigging these up. It's called burnt and backed. And all I've actually done is that once I've passed through my line, however many times I wanted to pass through, I got the lighter and I melted that end and I backed it out. So that, you know, that plastic ball at the end of the line is pushed hard up against the stitch. So that is backed and burned. Um, the triple uh, failed at 216 kilos, which is a loss of about 18.5%. Uh, the quad... Uh, burnt and backed uh, was the strongest out of all the knots, uh, except for the improved clinch, um, was 228 kilos, which is a loss of 14% of line strength. Um, and the quad burnt and heat strength. I did this one a little bit differently. Um, instead of um, backing, it, backing that knot or that ball all the way back to the line, I left the tail and I put some heat shrink. Um, and it failed a little bit early. It was a loss of 22% um, there. A uh, loss of 22% line strength. Um, this told me one really important thing is this whole knot is based on stretch over the whole st or all the all the different stitches because basically what happens is the more you actually pull on this line the harder the main line collapses or presses against your stitches uh, and i think the heat shrink must have gotten the way of that um, and that was basically my second mistake as well as i should have done more of a comparison between um, as i said before the stitches and whip and the burnt and back uh, Burton backed. Uh, I threw in two little afterthoughts. One was a long uh, stitched and whipped and it was basically about 30 mil, uh, a bit more than an inch. I think it's an inch and a quarter. Um, I've stitched and I stitched it really heavy, really tight backwards and forwards with a really heavy gauge nylon line and I whipped it super tight all the way through. That failed at uh, 165 kilos, um, which is you know a loss of 38% uh, line strength, which is actually quite a lot. I thought it would have actually been a bit stronger than that because knots are all about friction and you're creating a tremendous amount of friction with all that stitching, but that's where it failed. Uh, and the other one I tested as well was the triple long tail. Um, yeah, it's like I said, it was a triple stitch with a long tail and I left that tail loose and it failed quite early. So again, it sort of gives me the indication that burnt and backed is stronger. Now, look, the thing is you don't actually have to use these at full strength. I quite often use um, just a single burnt and backed uh, in the workshop if I'm just making a ring pull or something nice and light. Look, it, you know, would have, I mean, look, it's, uh, it's not gonna be less than 126 kilos, which is, it's more than I can pull with my finger, that's for sure. Um, so that's one thing to consider as well. The two mistakes I made is I absolutely should have cross-checked. Um, once I've done all these results, I should have put that engine crane scale back on the rig and dialed in all those, uh, all these, um, you know, one third scale uh, readings and read the scale back out on the digital scale as well. It would have just validated all my points. Um, I suspect it was actually going to be, I suspect this is quite accurate anyway, or accurate enough for what we're going to do with it. Uh, and the second mistake I've was already mentioned, as I should have done more of a comparison between burnt and backed and stitched and whipped. Um, Look, that's it, I think, on that side of it there. I think this is a whole lot of numbers. But um, look, listen, guys, thanks very much for all, uh, your support and everything. But more importantly, if you guys want to learn how to tie um, you know, these, uh, these knots, how to make these paracord fids, um, you know, leave a comment down below. I'll definitely make the effort to film it. I'll film it sooner than later as well, depending on how much, um, you know, how much interest is. There may not be any, I actually don't know. Um, but yeah, definitely leave a comment if you're interested. Um, I'll definitely do a video on how you can make these brass needle feeds and how to actually do that style uh, stitch or that eye splice. Um, but look, until next time, guys, um, thanks very much for your trouble and I'll see you then.